How would you define the zeitgeist movement in one statement? Well, you know, it's hard for me not to answer that question by defining the word zeitgeist, which you've probably heard me do before. But I think that's really important because people don't think about the state of their awareness as culture has defined it. People don't stop to think about all their behaviors, all their values, and how it really is mostly an amalgamation of culture, hence the zeitgeist itself by definition. So the zeitgeist movement is to move the zeitgeist you know, into a new age of enlightenment, one that actually uses scientific thought in a way to help the species in a very tangible way too as well that shouldn't be considered utopian or anything else. So the zeitgeist movement to me is the absolute transition of thought of the global culture. Out of all the subjects you speak on, what is most interesting to you? Uh, the subject matter I think is about solutions is always more important than the problems to speak about content. I think you do have to get people to understand the deep flaws of the current system in order to get them to really shift the tide. You know, I've realized that, but at the same time, if you present just the new model to show how better it could be and dismiss dismiss everything with respect to arguments on the arguing for or against the prior model, just show the new model, that's even more profound. But it, the detail of that though is so is so ex explicit, uh, it's so tedious, I should say, that it's very hard to just jump into that because people's baggage is so strong. So you have to always deviate a little bit back to counter their arguments that come from the current model, come from the monetary system and the current culture. So does that make sense? So you always end up in this ebb and flow. But I try my best to address solutions, which is why the, the total, I guess a good half of the Zeitgeist Movement Defined is all about solutions that we put together. Just to, you know, we can criticize all day, as many theorists have, but until you impose, impose solutions, you're not really doing much. Do you have any preferred websites or publication outlets when you conduct your research? Uh, well, I mean, I'm constantly searching and reading. I don't go to any specific websites per se. I do searches. I do different internet searches for news and different, different subjects. So if I'm curious about the state of unemployment, I do, say, a Google search or a Bing or a Yahoo search. I use different search engines as well because, unfortunately, they all bias and prioritize things in different ways. That's how I usually search for media. I take what I see and I also examine the source meaning is it a right-wing website, is it left-wing, I look at the prior history. That's pretty much the only way you can really objectively measure uh, information on the internet anymore. You can't just go to say Russia Today or Al Jazeera or CNN. Each one of them have their problems as far as the way they bigot themselves towards their establishment. Could you speak on your progress for inter-reflections? It is going to be a live action film as opposed to a documentary. Even though it does have lots of very core knowledge-based attributes, it's not just live action in the sense of a drama that has no relevance to anything. There's a lot of very specific sourcing built into this. So I'm trying to think, it's not a docudrama. I really can't think of a word to describe it. It's going to depict, I don't want to give it away, it's going to depict a transition from modern society in a very abstract way, very gestural way, but also very scientifically accurate way in certain it's called interreflections, which means the bouncing between mirrors. So I'm using the hindsight of the future to discuss the past. And I'm also using, excuse me, uh, hindsight of the future to yeah, dis discuss the present, which is the past. And I'm also uh, intermixing a number of different time layers to show how, uh, how to describe this in the easiest way, to show that how culture has transformed historically, how we can anticipate its transformation in the future based on current trends, and then of course it jumps way to the future where we're already in this new society and people are living there. It talks about the problems that are actually emerging in that society to counter, say, utopian ideas and stuff like that. It's, it's very much bent around the movement, but it isn't. It's not going to be a movement work. It's going to be three films released, one a year, and it's going to try and appeal to an audience that is does not familiar with the subject matter at all and get them on that train of thought through a real live action. Not Holly, it's not Hollywood, it's, that's, I don't like that style, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's got actors, it's going to be a very, very different experience in the Zeitgeist Film Trilogy. Are you saying like where you are in the process as far as... Really uh, I'm not as far as I, 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 <laughs> as I announced in Toronto in my last lecture last week, I said I'm going to kind of put a stop to my public speaking for a while because it's been so distracting uh, for the movement. It's been two years delay with the Film Trilogy. So I'm still in, the, I'm still in basic, basically refining the script and setting up the technical requirements before I begin all the shooting and processing, which hopefully I can knock out in like six months for the first one. Uh, but it's going to be, a, it's not going to be like a three hour work like moving forward, it'll start off like an 80 minute work. Each one will be roughly about that duration. And it's one big film actually, I'll give that away. It's just going to have a cliffhanger each time. So the audience isn't going to know what to think is going to happen next, which is very important to gain that kind of public suspense. 
and I'm hoping it gets very large. I'm going to in independent distribution, but I'm going to try my best to get off the internet. Not it'll still be on the internet, but get away from the underground and really bring this to the highest level I can feasibly without compromising the integrity of course. And will you continue the Culture and Decline series? That will come back after the first film is done. So the title Culture and Decline represents a pretty cynical approach to these topics. Will it be taking a more solution-oriented focus moving forward? Yeah. But some of the culture and ascent was the last phrase I used on the sixth episode. And I did that purposefully, you know, because it's not underneath the surface of it are solutions. If you really pay attention to that show, it's not just a bunch of complaining in a George Carlin-esque way. It's also very Carl Sagan-esque. It's also about defining principles and setting up these trains of thought. Uh, the final episode I thought was extremely positive because I, again, but it's all a matter of targeting different angles. So my goal as a communicator, which is really what I am at the end, at the end of the day, is to create different forms of media and different contexts for different walks of life to begin to relate to. So people that are very cynical of society, they watch Culture and Decline and see that Carlin-esque quality, and those that are more socially concerned go to Zeitgeist moving forward, you know, or the lectures or the very specific material. So you, does that make sense? Absolutely. So I'm still solution focused by all means. In fact, the new trilogy will be the most explicit but yet abstract expression of solutions, even though it's encapsulated in a very non, um, non orthodox information sort of method. That's, again, not typical of a normal drama. So it's, it's a very difficult piece I'm working on, very abstract. You'll, you'll be surprised when you see it. I hope it, I hope it works, because it's going to be a little trying to pick up for the audience. So. And uh, the Zeitgeist Media Festival, um, so the date has not been released. Not yet. We're, we're waiting on some confirmations of some larger names, and we're trying to figure out how to make it a little more, well, to be perfectly honest, a little bit more cost efficient because that's been a very, very expensive pro program. We get a great turnout, but it's a very hard program, as you might imagine. The Z days are one thing, putting on a 10 hour or eight hour media festival with tons of bands and all the logistics that go with that proved to be much more complicated than we thought and cost effect and cost and costly, excuse me. So we're, we're on the we're on the sidelines for the moment before we decide how we're moving forward for this year. Okay, well, Peter, thank you very much. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh...